This is Delight Channel. Timak is my name, and today we touch ground on a topic that we started about two months plus now. That means over eight videos where we have been focusing on life life balance. Thank you for being a part of this series. Thank you for being a part of this channel. And thank you for being here as we touch ground. One more thing to cover and then I'll be done with this series. And um, if you were here last week, you remember that I tried to take you through a few practical steps that can help you achieve life, life balance. Just in case you've missed the videos, you need to go back and watch. But let me quickly do a quick recap so that I can link it to the landing part and then we can have this done with. I shared five practical steps with you already on how you can achieve life-life balance. The first I said has to do with the fact that you must reset your life equation, change your life equation. Let it not be work life. Remember, you have just one life and then live based on purpose. Check our video on purpose just to be clear as to what we mean by that. The second point has to do with the fact that you must kick competition and perfectionism. They drain you, they add no value, live your life and stop running or comparing yourself with people that you will certainly have no business competing with. Number three, you must set your priorities right. Okay, do not just chase everything because different things carry different values at different times. Number four is that you must be deliberate about your priorities. Having said them, don't think they will magically appear. You must go after them, chase them, be deliberate, find accountability partners, take spe specific steps, build a routine, build a schedule, do whatever you need to do, but don't just let it be a passive interaction be deliberate. And five but not the least is the fact that you must remember and appreciate the fact that life happens in stages. And those stages should determine what your priorities are. Now, the five steps is for you as an, as an individual. But if you happen to be an entrepreneur and you appreciate the fact that lack of life-life balance can cost you money, can cost you people, can cost you uh, profit, can cost you productivity, then what should you do? Number one is the fact that you must build the concept of life-life balance into your organizational architecture. It must be a critical and obvious pillar of your business that you are committed to. How will that show? It will show in your policies, it will show in your procedures. It will show in your practices. You need to look at your environment, look at your business landscape, and I tell you, you can turn this thing into a competitive advantage. If your industry, as an example, is the industry that employs a lot of women, the kind of policies you have must be gender sensitive and be deliberate to take care of the things that are important to the average woman. Pregnancy, child birth, um, child raising, family nurturing. If you are deliberate to bake and add these things to your policies, they completely stand you out and make a difference. Okay, so that is on one side. On the other side is that there are certain work practices that you need to consider things like flexi time where you allow people to choose the number of hours they work within a within a particular range things like tele um, uh, telecommuting where people can work remotely they can leverage on technology to work outside of the office you can do job sharing you can practice different work practices that just makes it possible for the individual that works for you to be able to work towards and achieve life life balance number three is to be deliberate about healthy practices or health related policies for your organization things like deliberately setting up a period where 
the entire organization or individual departments or units can work out together. It helps you to build them as a team. It helps them to be physical, to sweat, to move because we are created to move. And it creates a very convivial atmosphere for your organization. All right. Things like deliberately ensuring that there are medical checkups, it becomes standardized, it becomes routine, where instead of giving sick leaves, you give health leaves, you give wellness leave, where people can actually just take time off just to unwind and rest as against applying for sick leave. There are many new innovative and creative things you can do in that space as an entrepreneur. And last but not the least is the fact that I've seen organizations that appoint or have created an office they call Chief Happiness Officer. Yes, there's a role that just looks after the employee from a point of, are you happy? If you are not, why not? Is there anything we can do as an organization to help you become happy? You may first think that, oh, all they will be asking about is money, salary, salary, increase in rev, increase in salary. But you'll be shocked that experience and statistics have shown that, yes, you will hear a lot of salary issues, but rarely does that lead to unhappiness. There are many other hygiene issues. Sometimes it's just as simple as ventilation. Just finding somebody to talk to or just getting some consideration for a period of time when an individual is dealing with some domestic issues. So this chief happiness officer, you may not necessarily create that role in your organization because of the size or whether you even think it's something that requires that kind of title. But if you create that mindset in your management team, in your supervisory team, as an organization where you visibly demonstrate that you are interested in the happiness of your organization, you will be achieving a lot. And so, with that last point, we have finally touched down. I hope the landing wasn't too violent. I hope we had a smooth ride. I hope we had a smooth landing. We have been talking about life, life balance, and I hope you have really enjoyed this series as I have, and I hope you have learned a thing or two. Please feel free to share this with everybody that you know. Send them around. Let others get to know about it. We have friends and families and colleagues who need to know this for their own good and for our own commonwealth. And until I come your way next week, when we will be moving on to a different bus stop. Very soon, we'll be about 200 videos. It's just shocking that we've been able to achieve so much in such a very short time. It's because you've been there, you've been following us, and you've been encouraging us. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next week as we start a brand new topic. And until then, t is still my name, d is still the channel, and whatever you do, don't ever forget that all we are trying to do is what? Make a little difference. I hope you'll be here next week to see us start a new topic. Bye.